Okay, Mr. Tim Kramer, and uh, the process of getting getting yourself in the right mind, uh, the, the right emotional state. What would you say for golf? Yeah, it, it's basically what we're talking about here, and these are the peak performance principles. Uh, but it's kind of like if you don't have an understanding of these, then, then it's easy to. Uh, this is still a little bit of the theory part of it. But in a way, they're important principles to understand because we can get real uh, askew, askewed on this. First one being, in every single moment, we're doing the best we can. So I have a question for you. You're out in the fairway, and you're in between six iron and seven iron. And you hit the six iron. Even though part of you was saying seven iron, but you hit the six iron, you pull it left into the hazard penalty shot. Could you have done better? What do you think? Possibly. From a physical standpoint or a decision standpoint? Well, I don't know either. Could, could you have done better? Possibly. Possibly. What do you think? I don't know. I could have hit the seven iron and chunked it into the bunker on the right. You could have. We never I, know. We never know right. what would have happened. That's very true, actually. That's a, that's a very good point. The bottom line is, guys, in the moment we do anything, we do it that way because it felt better to do it that way in that now moment. Now, it doesn't mean we don't learn from it, but ever to look back and condemn ourselves or to say it could have been any different in that moment would be a gross distortion of the way the, the brain was communicating to the body. Wouldn't it be very important to be able to set your emotions so you can commit to whichever iron you did select? It is. It, it's hugely important. Absolutely. That in, in fact, in fact, that's really what the better players do. Is it, it's it's no different maybe than a prize boxer. If I'm going down, at least I'm going down swinging. I'm not going down because I was playing chicken uh, out there. But but the point also to look back and berate ourselves for anything. It's just not helpful, and the reason it's not helpful is it couldn't have been any other way in the moment we did it based upon how the brain was communicating to the body, how the emotions were communicating to the body. It really all played itself out in that moment. It's done. It's, it's a, a done, done deal. It's a done deal. It's the best you can do. <laughs> unless, you're quick. unless you just didn't apply yourself. Well, but even, even if you, but even if you, you didn't, didn't apply, apply yourself, it felt better to you not to apply yourself. Yeah. Exactly. So, so even that, even not applying yourself, say I got lazy or I got lethargic or whatever, it felt better to be, to be that way. Now, does that mean we don't observe that and learn from that moving forward? Hopefully we do. Well, you also approach that with what's my experience been in the past. When I'm playing really of well, course. I'm in between clubs. Of course. I take the longer clubs of course. and up. When I'm playing poorly, I'll hit the shorter iron swing harder. And, 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 and that could be, but that's all part of your story. But even so, the point being, we so often, well, think about this, whenever you get upset, you're getting upset about something that's A, already happened, and B, could not have been any different than it was because of the way your brain was firing. And the signals that you sent to the brain in that now moment, does that make sense? You're, you're, you're beating yourself up on something that could never have been another way. And that just seems in that moment in time, that was the best you could do. It was. It was not. It, it was the best you could do. That's correct. It could not have unfolded any other way in that moment in time. So, how much energy are we willing to leak out there over things that couldn't? I mean, talk about insanity. I'm getting mad over something that could not have been any different than I than I set it up to be. Which your goal was to hit it on the green close to the pin, not in the hazard. So. Well, it always, it, always, it always was, and the fact that, in fact, you didn't try to hit it in the hazard. <clears throat> no, you did not try to hit it. Of course you didn't try to hit right. it in the hazard. Uh, did, you, did you decelerate? Yeah, but it felt better to you to decelerate than not to decelerate. So what I'm saying is you were still always just acting out. The body was just acting out the signals yep. it received from the brain. And so in a way, the physical could not have been any different than the instructions it received. So to get judgmental about that or to get upset about that is just absolute insanity. You really didn't have any other, you, yeah. you, you didn't have any other way it could have played itself out in that now moment. Now, do we learn from it? Yes. Yeah. When I take more club, choke down, stay that way, that usually is better. Yeah. Great.
when I take less club and swing hard, don't always see good things. Well, now you're learning from that. Right. Okay. And Tim, I would imagine if you're able to stay in a, in a, in a well <coughs> emotional state of mind throughout your game, yes, it saps your energy a lot less than... Oh, it, there's no doubt. It, it's just negative emotions. It just that, drains that's us. That's very important to a fellow like myself. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, again, my, my better players. It's just like <laughs> night and day, Tim. After 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 I was in a good emotional space out there, I just felt like I could have played the rest of the day. And after a bad round, they're just absolutely exhausted because they beat up on themselves mercilessly. So the second principle, get the inside right and the outside falls effortlessly into place. Well, the paradigm most of us use to evaluate our success is based upon the physical senses. It, what we see with the eyes, what we feel with the, the body, sounds we hear. Uh, I jokingly say in golf, I hope the smell and taste don't come into it too much. <laughs> if you've ever been around geese, you understand that may not be true. But anyways, the platform we use through, through Spirit of Golf relies less on the physical senses and more on how we emotionally feel with the understanding that when I feel good, what I perceive through the physical senses improves. Do, do, does that make sense? Yes. Say we, more. We, what's that? Say more when you feel good. When you feel good, what you feel with the hands is going to feel awesome. What you see with the eyes is going to be either uh, awesome or acceptable or whatever. When we play from this world of emotion, when we set up the emotions, what we perceive through the physical senses literally changes. When you're in a happy mood, you're not going to maybe give it the death grip. <laughs> You're going, you're, going to, you're going to be in a calm enough space to remember to grip it properly. When you're in a bad mood, you just go back to all the old habits that never worked anyway. Okay. So again, we're just, we're just using emotion as the foundation for the stuff that follows. Right. Okay? That's, that's why, like, when you're traveling, maybe, maybe everybody doesn't have this problem, but when I'm traveling, if I'm not real careful, I'm forgetting this or I'm... Exactly. Doing we, noticed yesterday, <laughs> <What's that? laughs> we noticed that yesterday, John. What's that? We noticed that. Wallet, phone, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, good point. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, well, exactly. But you know what, again, you could also make the case you were in such having so much fun yeah. yesterday that, they, you know, you, did you forget that stuff? Yeah, you got a little lamps in mind. But, but man, it's right. when you yeah. get my age, you'll understand no, better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm just as bad currently. So the third peak performance concept, it's a very important one, is that we cannot perform beyond how we imagine ourselves in relation to our games. Everybody has a picture, kind of a deep internal barometer of how you picture yourself in relation to your performance. You had one before you came here, hopefully we've improved this a little bit, but the bottom line is your performance will never be of a higher caliber than how good you think you are. So if we can't change how good you think you are, or could be, which again, it's, it's, a, it's a blending of both the mind game, which is physical. Because you see something that you really, okay, I've been missing this piece of the puzzle. It might have been my putting or whatever it is, driving. All of a sudden I now know exactly every time how to make sure the ball goes right to left rather than over into the, into the water has. Then that, that potential uh, changes the way you think you're going to be. Well, it's it, it, so we play at the level of how good you really think you are. Well, it's you like know. what I said yesterday. You watch a tour pro walk down the fairway. Yeah. They walk like they know they're good. And they do. <laughs> they do walk like they. I mean, know good players good. walk then, tall and proud. You know that was Tom Weisskopf. I'll never forget that when I saw him playing in, in the seniors. It seemed like everyone else out there. I don't know, they just didn't have the air about them. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I, watched, I watched him play yeah. when I was in high school. You know what I was He was as good as anyone I ever saw. Yes. Who was that? Tom, Tom Weisskopf. See, which is, which is why even, you might not be tapped into pure positive belief. You might not think I'm the greatest, but that's okay. But it's better to be hopeful than it is to be pessimistic. Well, I think you sent an email out a couple weeks ago that was about your sort of internal tuner. Yes. And and it made me realize, oh yeah, I have some 
you know, not so conscious, but definitely their thoughts about how good I can be, how good I am. And what right most now. people will do is they'll yeah. try and get in the mind to figure out what those concepts are, rather than, again, here's the simplicity of this work. If you just feel good, yeah, you don't need to worry about all the thoughts that made you unhappy. Most people, because we're, we're really just kind of moving out of a traditional paradigm of, it's more of a psychological paradigm of, I need to figure out everything that's bothering me, and, and I just need to fix it, get in there and fix it. We're moving into this paradigm very quickly, actually, that I need to feel good. And if I feel good, I will think happier thoughts. And in the thinking of happier thoughts, all the ones that I don't even need to really deal with, they're just going to disappear because I'm giving more airtime to feeling good and thinking happier thoughts. So are you saying that I don't have to worry about some internal introspective process to figure out how good I think I am or not? I just need to feel calm and Thank good you. in the moment. Thank you. We go to solution. Absolutely. What's the solution? And that will solve itself. It takes care of itself. Right. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah, that's a lot easier. <laughs> it, it's, 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 it's totally easier. Yeah. We could look at it another way. In the course of one hour, this is going to be profound, so make sure you're listening. In the course of one hour, the more time you spend feeling good, the less time there is to feel bad. Yes. Yeah. 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 You got me on that. You got that one. Peter, did you like that one? Perfect. So that really, the more time you spend feeling good, the more time the body is going to move how you want it to move the more time your thoughts are going to come to you that mirror that higher frequency of emotion and the rest of it just disappears. Now that's very different than traditional psychology which says, totally different, which says we've got to get in there, we've got to identify what you don't like, we've got to kick it around, we've got to fix it, right. or wrestle it to the ground and kill it, right. which we never do because we give more energy to it. Yeah. So we're really replacing here. And yeah. we will learn to do the, the, the techniques we'll talk about in a while. We do that shot by shot. Yeah. We don't make the goal overwhelming. Oh, man, I've got to do this the whole day, which is kind of where you want. How do I do this the whole day? And I'm saying, oh, way too big, way too big of a task at yeah. this point in yeah. time. It'll get easier and easier. Yeah. But the way we do that is just this shot. Cinch. One shot at a time. One shot at a time. Cinch by the inch, hard by the yard. Is it? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so when we're talking about, oh, here we go again, we're really talking about uh, a mindset that's always based in problem. And, and, but a lot of times what we try to do, rather than just saying, I'm just going to feel good, and the oh, here we go again just goes away all by itself because you can't be energizing both. You can't be energizing you know, the, the problem and the solution in the same moment. So it really gets to be as simple as if I just find any way, any way I can to feel a little bit better right now, that thought just goes away. The oh, here we go again. Amazing, isn't it? Just this work again is so basic when you it, it, it's it's com it's complex in the beginning because there's so many we think there's so it's many variables happening shift, yeah. when when again I just strongly encourage you to does this story right now feel good or not good to me is this helpful or not helpful and it takes a high level of awareness though because we do run garbage that we've been doing for years yeah. most just want to most want to fix the garbage or clean the garbage rather than just uh, it's almost like just start with a new new slate, clean slate. A clean slate. Uh, an analogy I heard many years ago was was that was that you know um, somebody was having problems with their 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 pipes that were putting water back into a pond. The water was coming back very polluted or very cloudy or whatever, and so they had somebody come out. And, yeah, there was stuff in the pipes, and so the pipes needed would need to be cleaned and whatever in order to get the water clear. Or they could lay new pipes. Okay, well, number five was believing a scene. Yeah. Just, just tell us a little bit, just a, a quick summary of what that means. Believing a scene is probably the crux of the mind game. We've set up the mind game in a way that, that once I see the proof, then I'll believe I'm good enough. What we now know through all the stuff is you're really only seeing what you first believe. The way the brain is wired, we only see things outside of us that match patterns 
of thought and emotion firing inside the brain. You're only seeing what you already believe about yourself, which is why we said before, you're never going to see a gain of a higher caliber than you perceive yourself in relation to your game. It can't be of a higher caliber, nor can it be of a lower caliber. But if you got a, if you got a major case of the eye sucks going on, then you're so not going to see very good stuff. I, is it is it accurate to say it's about you know it's, it's standing on the tee box and thinking I believe that this can this shot can be great. Yeah. Versus even if I'm just you know triple the hole, this shot can be great. And I believe that right. as opposed to okay, let right. me just try really hard right. and well, see gonna, what happens. Absolutely, we're going to talk a little bit about that okay. because you may not really believe it, and if you're giving right. the belief the lip service, that's not going to work. And we're going to talk about that process. What do we do with that too? Okay. Uh, I just came off a triple bogey. Okay, I go to the next tee. Yeah, I really believe I can hit a great shot. I really believe I can yeah. hit a great. I don't really believe I can hit a great <laughs> shot. So what do we do with that energy? Tim is the same also as the guy that's a double handicapper thinking that yeah. that's where he belongs, he's never going to become a Carol or a Christine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the real trap too with, with when as coaches we take, say, we take a, a uh, we hold up anybody. We, we used to hold up Tiger, now we're holding up Jason Day. Oh, this is, this is what this guy does. And, and if you do that, then you too can, and the bottom line is we're all unique and we've all got ways of processing information. So this really becomes our journey in relation to ourselves rather than holding other people as the way I should do things. Um, none of us ever know how somebody else perceives information. I mean, even, even in, in yeah. I love Jason Day's routine, but how do we really know? And, and even what he explains, how do we ever know how somebody perceives information? Just by what they tell us, but what happens if they don't even know? So if we, if we really believe that if we use your principles and Mr. Kroger's principles, then we will be able to achieve that. If so you we really have to believe, believe that. If you yeah. have, if, if, yes, yeah. yeah. Now, most people can't get to pure 100% positive belief because we've got old patterns of thought going in. But if we can go from 50% to 55, we're making big progress and pretty soon it's 55 to, to 65. And, and before long, you can be in that optimistic no place of knowing and belief. And that really is the goal. But you're right, guys, that, that um, lip service to belief ain't going to work. We can tell ourselves things uh, until, you know, but it isn't going to work if we don't really feel it and believe it. So we have to be very careful with that, and we're going to talk about that a little bit. So what accurate goals are. Yeah. So the six principles, we get what we are focused upon, not what we want. And, and what that really means is that every story becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and that in a way you can want and want and want something. And most people do, oh, what's it going to take? What, what's it going to take? But that's, that's not the energy that we're, we need. Uh, again, we talked about this yesterday, but do we get what we want or do we get what we believe? We get what we believe. We always get what we believe. So you can want and want and want something. You can you can really have outrageous desire. But if you don't believe it, you're not going to see it. The other thing being, remember we talked about remember the checker analogy yesterday, the desire and the belief. Well, the further away, the more we want something but don't believe it, the more emotionally we're going to be in a lot of pain. Because now we really want something that we don't believe we can have. And boy, that is just the classic recipe for, for deep frustration. Does it make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. So, so the key being that we have to get belief up to speed with desire. And we're going to talk about how we do that in just a minute. So the seventh principle is that there is not enough action we can take to compensate for misguided thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. If you start with a flawed premise, the premise will play itself out. And what we see in this game a lot, what we actually see in all athletics, is I'm just going to work hard enough to overcome these flawed beliefs. And it doesn't work that way. Because, again, what you're seeing in your performance is always a mirror to what you believe. 
So if you can't get belief up to speed, here, here, here's, the, here's the trap, is that I work hard, I work hard, I work hard, and now I want it more and more and more, but I'm back here stuck in an old belief system saying I'm not really that good. So I'm giving, I'm giving the desire a little bit of false hope in a way, correct? But not really believing it. And again, that's what most people do. I'm just going to work harder on my game. Now, this is not about not working hard or having fun with the work that you're putting in your game. That's not the issue at all. But your, your physical action will never be of a higher caliber than your belief system. So let's get the belief system in a solid place, and then really all the action that you're going to want to take will come right up to right up to speed with that. Um, it's why working on technique alone without a solid mind, I see this with perfectionists all the time. They work at it, work at it, work at it. All they do is work at it, and a, and a shot is two feet off line, and oh, here we go again. <laughs> well, we've all been there, right? So that the action alone can't, because if it's never good enough, it's never good enough. And if it's never good enough, you're going to find a way to sabotage it every time. So in a way, we have to find a way to get the thoughts and the emotions up to speed with what we want. And when we do, everything is really harmonizing very well. And that's when we see states of peak performance. That's, you know, it's like, yeah, I really believe or I feel pretty good right now that I could hit a pretty good shot. Now, am I 100% am I sure? <laughs> I don't know many players that are, because if they were 100% sure, I would maintain the ball would go in the hole, but then I would also maintain you get bored very quickly. So if everything, again, if everything went in, it's going to be like, you know, that's the beauty of golf. <laughs> we're never going to have that kind of belief. But we can get it up there pretty good. There's something really good here is about to happen. And, and that, I think, is the optimal mind state. So the eighth principle is that the destination cannot be happier than the journey. And so much of it that we do is that like, well, someday, someday I'll be happy. I can be miserable along the way, but someday when I see the results, when I have the game of my dreams or I see the results and I'm winning and whatever, then I'll be happy. It doesn't work that way. And that's a little bit of that time construct we talked about yesterday. If everything is the now, and of course it is, then, then if, if right now I'm miserable, thinking, well, someday I'll be happy, it, it doesn't work. So I'm miserable now because I'm not where I want to be. And I'm miserable now because I'm not where I want to be. And I'm miserable now because I'm not where I want to be. But someday when I get to where I want to be, then that now moment is going to be somehow magically happy. It, 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 it doesn't work that way. So the destination can never be happier than the journey. In other words, there cannot be a happy ending to an unhappy journey. <clears throat> this is where I'd love to, I believe this totally. Well, we've, but, lived, we've lived this. Right. At I've our ages, if we haven't figured out that. i miserable the entire time, and then been like, yes, I shot 72. So what's your view now? Yeah, and how long does that last for before you go back off in the weeds again? So I get, well, that was so I, that's my, I think my, I love your take on what Stacey Lewis said. You know, she just was angry yesterday. She didn't have the swing she wanted yesterday. Um, yeah. She, like, made a double, blah, blah, blah. But she made 11 birdies, right? She's such 63, you right. know, like, right. Right. how do we? I, I don't know. And this is one of the things as a coach that I will never do is try to imagine what was going on in someone's life. I leave that to the, to the broadcasters and the announcers right. because they seem very good at knowing yeah, what some, they, they, get, they, get, they, get, they seem to be very good at being able to know what went in somebody through someone's yeah. mind. I don't know. I do know on an energy scale. I know anger is a very low vibrating energy compared to passion, joy, bliss, knowing, those things. Those are very high vibrating energies. So I believe in time that by sustaining those high energy states, we tap into states of peak performance. So can we use anger to temporarily get ourselves in it? Of course. But the question is, if that's the only way you can get yourself fired up, do you really want to be that angry all the time, or do you just want to live in a more joyful state uh, more of the time? Now, the other thing we know, and if you remember the emotional energy scale, is that 
Anger can be a very productive emotion if you're down in states of despair and depression. So if you're really rock bottom, anger is a step. I mean, if you're just totally, if you're just totally destroyed with your game, anger is a step up the emotional energy scale. But anger compared to frustration is a step down. So, so if we go from frustration to anger, now we're leaking energy. If we go from depression to anger, we're going up and actually adding energy. So the goal with the energy system is always to be adding energy. Always be adding it, not, not taking it away. And that's why, you know, you were saying that, wow, you know, maybe if I'm in a good space after I played, I might have extra energy for the day. And it's like, absolutely. Because otherwise you're just out there getting upset and draining energy. And that's why, it, it, that's why golf and life become so draining is we're just, we're just basically pissing it away. So the ninth principle is want and desire from a feeling place of expectancy and already arrived. This is really this is really the work that we need to do. We need to get into we need to get into a good space about what hasn't even appeared, and that's the hard thing to do. We are such a fact-driven, physically oriented culture that we, we we really are saying, well, I need to see it, and I need to need to feel it, and I need to to perceive it in front of my eyes before I can get into a space where I believe that that it's it's true. But what the new stuff is all saying is, no, no, we, we've got to get into that space that we haven't even we're, we're doing it in imagination, and so we're doing it from a place of where um, basically we. Uh, we feel the desired future so intentionally that it just doesn't have any choice but to appear. And if you remember, even as Einstein said, match the frequency of the reality that you want, you cannot help but get that reality. That's a very profound statement. You become the success that you want to feel, and when you feel that success, everything around you will come up to that level. And then we say, yeah, but, and we're back off in the weeds. Well, I believe that, but, right? Does that make sense? So, so really, you've got, to, you've got to become, in advance of seeing it, shot by shot, you have to put yourself in that space of success, not based upon past results. Unless they feel good, which is great, but then you're running the risk of when they feel bad, you're off in the weeds. So that's why I strongly encourage players, what we do is we get emotions stable and out in front of performance so that no past performance affects us. Because if you're always happy, it doesn't matter whether, whether the past was good or not so good. You're not dragging any of it into the space you want to be in right now, the stable space you want to be in. So the last principle we talk about is what we say, be here now, the present moment, the now. We have in our, in our culture um, what I think is probably, and in our golf games, is probably the biggest disease that there is, and we call that what is itis. You know, what, what is itis? What is itis? I am so preoccupied with what is that I can't get my mind out to where it needs to be. I'm just, I'm just observing what is, and I'm, I'm calling that reality, and I'm saying, well, kind of what I'm really doing is saying, and it's probably, here we go again, it's always going to be this way because this is what is. So we have to be able to use the power of the mind to get beyond what is. Another way of saying that is, are we focused on problem or solution? Because solution is always beyond what we're observing right now, is it not? Solution is a new approach to what we're, what we're imagining. So if we can't use the power of the mind to get into solution, we've kind of got no chance. So if all we're doing is focusing on what is, there's a major performance leap. Because the bottom line too is the golf shot we've just hit is already done. It's already old, really already old news, is it not? It's already old news. So it really doesn't do us that much good in terms of imagining what we want, unless it feels good. But again, we open up the door then too of, of, well, I can only feel good if I'm imagining something from the past that was good. You're right, most people are going to go right back to something that didn't feel good. Mind is not that strong, right? So, so if we start, if we use the brain to start scanning for, for a positive past, 
I invariably would almost guarantee you that we're going to go to a pass that doesn't feel so good. We're probably about two thoughts or memories away. Oh, so away. even going back to, okay, I remember I had this shot with him and I hit it great? Yeah. It's... If you can do that, great. But you're not going to do that from a bad mood, first of all, right? Remember? Those memories are popping into your field of awareness because you're in a good mood. <clears throat> if you're not in a good mood, you're going to not remember the things you want to remember. You're going to remember the things that you don't. So again, we get back into this model of if I just take care of my, if a good mood in the now, then yes, memories like that will come in. So hypothetically, if we top the shot, yes, how would we, how would we utilize that this principle? For that? Yes, we're going to talk about that. Well, I think what you're saying is. Okay, the fact that I just talked it is to it, that, that's old news. It is. And I believe that what I can do next is awesome. Yeah, if, if you can get to that space, that's true. But but the more upset you get about topping it, right. now you can't get into that space because right. that's too big of a leap. But I'm looking for a solution right there. You, you should be looking for a solution right there. But I think rather than looking for a solution, even what we want to do is look for a good feeling space. We're going to talk about that. We're okay. very much going to talk about that because really, rather than going, you top it, and it's my contention, we want to go to neutral emotions rather than positive emotions. But I think most times when you top, exactly. right. I think most times when you top a shot, it's yeah. caused by tension. Oh, there's, there's, there. there. there's a good doubt about it. You kind of cre yes, you 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 did in some ways create the tension that created that physical breakdown. There's no doubt about it. Something happened. But, but again, we're, we're human and we're going to top shots. So to me, again, and this is a perfect opportunity, I think we have to be careful. There, there's a couple ways of doing that. There's, there's the thing of, of, I need to go back and figure out why I topped it. Or there's, I'm going to go to the next shot and put on the move that I've been practicing. And if I do that move properly, I can't top it. Plus, it syncs me back up with the move that I'm working on. You see, the one is a fixing mentality, and the other is a creation mentality. Mm -hmm. and, and the creation, I believe, works better if you know what you're doing, and this, again, is where Peter's work comes in. You do need to know what you're doing, because otherwise you're just kind of kind of just, you know, whistling in the dark, hoping something is, you know, you're going to scare the boogeyman away, and, and, and that doesn't work too well. So this whole idea, though, of being in the now is so important. Just this shot, just this one shot. And, and the way we do that, actually, is that we feel the desired, as yet invisible future right now. Yeah, be the ball. Be the ball. So. <laughs> All right, any questions? So those are the 10P performance concepts, and how we do those and put those into practice is what we're going to talk about next. Yeah, we're going to talk about that next. Think is better. Do you really got to know what you want and, and go for it? Or do you just chill out? and just kind of get more neutral out there. Which approach do you think is better? Move towards the desire. Move towards the desire, okay. I, I think it probably has to be a bit of both for a while. I think that's a really good answer. Yeah, it's a trick question. And the reason it's a trick question is it's all set up by our current state of mind. When you're in a good space, it feels great to go for it. Right? Yeah. When you're in a bad space, you better learn to chill out. Right. Does this make sense? Yeah. Now, this is what makes this program, yes, it makes this program very different than most coaching techniques. Mm -hmm. You go to the life coaches or the yeah. type A's and they're going to say, oh, no, no, I don't know what you want. you got to go for it. And then you go to the, to the, to the, to the Zen meditators, the Tibetan monks, and they're going to say, just, you know, now, I'm exaggerating both and having fun with both because I love both processes, actually. But the one that is best for you is which one feels best right now. That's why there's no magic formula to this work. It's an inner guidance process. So as I'm standing before this shot right now, what feels better? To go for it or to settle down a little bit? I guess and what I was looking at is, couldn't you look at it from two different aspects? One, from the immediate immediate desire. Yes. Maybe yes. The one. Yes. But for the overall is what I was thinking. Right. You want to be the overall desire is great as long as you're not getting too far out in the future. Right. Right. So I would stay stay present enough to what how do I want 
want to feel, and again, how do I want to feel right now? How do I want to feel right now? And, and how I want to feel right now is like, yeah, you know what, damn it, I got this. Or, or if I'm sitting there in this, this narrow fairway, it might just be, no, 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 let's just, let's, just, let's just put a smooth swing on it. You see how the goal now is changing, and the energy of the goal is changing. So to think, and this is one of the things in, with golfers, it's been my, actually all athletes, is we want, we want a single fix. Almost like with what you do, Peter, they just want, they want the cure as if it's one thing, rather than, no, it, 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 it changes. Today it's this thing, tomorrow it might be a little bit. It might be a little bit of this. Another piece of the puzzle. Exactly, but it's an adjustment process. It's a massaging process. But this process, unlike Peter's, is more physically oriented, but this process is more of an emotional, emotional massaging process. So I'm fond of saying that you can find a way to believe, or you can find a way not to disbelieve. Either energy is fine. Now, why is either energy fine, do you think? Actually, it's a very simple answer, because it hooks us up with the now. If you find a way, if you're tapped into belief, you're in the now. Because you're not in past or future, right? If you're really believing something good is about to happen, you are in the now. Or you can find a way just to chill and just be, yeah, all right, good. Not dissimilar to the first hole when we teed off a couple of days, a couple of days ago. When I stand on the first tee, it's just like, you know, what, 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 whatever. I mean, I jokingly say when I first came to the academies here and the PR people were interviewing me and whatever, and, and I was just kind of explaining the philosophy or whatever. One of the guys says, so, so you're, Tim, you're, you're kind of like ju just the big whatever. <laughs> well, that's the big whatever, and that's probably not far off. It's right. like I just hit it in the whatever. All right, whatever, let's go. All right, good. Now, that is not resignation. Right. It's actually a very happy state. Yeah, well, I, uh, so, you know, I just missed a putt. As I jokingly say to my players, don't worry, you're going to do it again. <laughs> I just got a double bogey. Yeah? Okay. Just wait. It'll ha I promise it'll happen again. You know, I just threw whatever. I just put a smile on your face. So, so, with that being said, we're really talking about this, this, this energy state here. We do this through a process I call detach, shift, or embrace. Detachment is actually the second one. It's the practice of letting go. If you took your hand right now and you just squeezed it, so just squeeze your fist right now, really hard, kind of as hard as you can do. And then just let go. Doesn't that feel awesome? Now that's that's the focus band right there. That's the green in the focus band. Now, isn't there another you talk about of releasing anger or yes. using anger, yes. an, using anger to bring your emotions? Yes. Isn't the uh, you, you hit a top of shot or you're, you choose the wrong iron for? Him. Sure, whatever. You grab that iron like that and then you put it back in your bag like right. that and then you let it go and right. Then you right. let your tension go. Right. Is that not a way to? It's a way of doing it, but I don't think it's as effective a way of doing it because if you're in a good enough space, A, you have no need to do that, but secondly, and here's the trap that I see, is if we're not careful, it becomes, our, it becomes addictive. And it becomes our only choice for when we hit a bad shot, I've got to do something to get angry. Right, but I, I was only talking about when you find yourself in that predicament where you have to, you, you feel you have to use anger to bring your emotional level up. Absolutely, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, it's been my experience in working with some of the tour players and the mini tour players, probably more than mini tour players, and they're just overdoing it. It's just like, it's like the first bad shot, they're slamming clubs. <laughs> and in a way, it gets so addictive, they don't even have another option. Right. So that's that's my only thing. The, the, so which is kind of why I get back to again when we get to the course, let's get in that optimistic state of mind and let's do our best to stay in that space so that we're not having to go down to anger to to kind of release this stuff. Now if we're down there, can it help? Yeah. But the other question is, um, if golf is a microcosm for the big game of life, do we really want to walk around all day? seeing things we don't like having to get pissed in order to get ourselves back on track. And it seems to me that a lot of people do that, of course, but it's a little kind of a slippery slope there. 
that do we really want to live our lives that way? And, and, and I know the answer to that. Most of us don't. That's why I guess I encourage us to try and get into a little more stable place so that we don't really have to. But you know what? Sometimes I guess it feels pretty good to go there. I just hit a terrible shot. You know what? It just feels good to slam the club. Well, it just seemed to me to coincide with this doing this and then releasing. Right, right. But what I'm suggesting with this is this is how most of us walk around out there all day, every day. Well, a lot of people walk around their whole lives, like maybe not this tight, but at least this yeah. tight. Yeah. Tight as a drum. Yeah. Tight as a drum. Yeah. As opposed to, all right, let's just, it's all just in the flow. In the flow. I think it's hard to balance if we think about the energy associated with those emotions. I think it's hard to balance from anger back up and back down. I mean, it that is, to me is, is a lot it is, more. It is impossible. And the best yeah. analogy I have for that is imagine that you're in a, driving a car and we'll call reverse, we'll call that negative emotion. So if you're going 80 miles an hour in reverse, your chances of getting to 80 miles an hour forward, which is where all of us really want to go, well, in very quickly, it's impossible. You're, it's too big of an energy leap, correct? Also whiplash rate. It's yeah. also whiplash yeah. rate. Yeah. Yeah. But more importantly, in a black but more importantly, <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> but, but more importantly, where do we have to go first? Where do we have to go first if we're going 80 negative? We have to, stop. We have to go back, yeah. to back to neutral. Back to so yeah. that's what this whole practice is yeah. about. When I'm feeling unwanted negative emotion, it is much more helpful to take in a breath that calms me down. To go to neutral, not to feel great, but even that's going to feel a whole lot better than the anger. So your answer, your question, I'm sorry, your question is, what do we do this stuff? There's really one very simple answer. I breathe. Because... Well, I, don't, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but maybe Christine is a little bit like me in that regard. But all day long at work, yeah. I have to be totally on guard. I can't be whatever. You know, I'm the boss. I've got a, a dozen people work for me. They're always looking to me for the answers. Uh, but you, know, you can do you I can do it you can do it happily or I can you can do it happily, do it, but I can never take a stress. whatever approach. But whatever no, whatever no, you're misunderstanding whatever. Whatever is an emotionally detached position. Uh, whatever isn't oh whatever happens. That's not what I'm saying. Whatever is just It's not laissez fair. Oh not, god no. no. Oh no, it's, it's totally it's engaged. It's a total acceptance. It's a, oh, whatever will happened. be, will be. Whatever case will be, will be. Sarah. Case hurrah, hurrah. That's that's what we're talking yeah, about. Whatever. Many times they have to say that's fine, but it can't be that way. It has to be this way. Well, okay, yeah. okay. But it's a, it's a highly regulated industry. Well, and I, I get rules. that, but you can still do that work with joy, or you can do yeah. it with struggle and grind. Exactly. And that's, well, and that's the point. Exactly. Here's a highly regulated industry. Same thing. Well, every course. And, and one of my major projects is, it has exactly to do with the law and getting doctors to comply in a, in a space may, that they never do. May, it's very may, frustrating. May I may yeah. interject though, is that you're still only seeing the business as you're wired. It ain't that way outside of how you're perceiving it to be. Well, but let me say what I think you're saying in a slightly different way, which is, it's the difference between when I see someone literally breaking the law and being like, you cannot do that, and saying, hey, so here's what the law is, and this is what needs to happen, right? right? And it, exactly. but, but the yeah. energy that I have around it is, and it took me like a long time. Most of my yes. work is more like with coaching employees where I'm like, mm -hmm. you're an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, right. And I'm not right. gonna say that, but that's the energy right. that I'm coming with. I'm like, oh my God, I cannot believe this person's a cop. And that's the difference between that and saying, Wow, okay, I get it. This person needs some coaching and let me interact exactly. in a different yeah, way. Absolutely. My question to you it's is, gonna get to my question to you is yeah. even as a manager, which feels better? Exactly. Pointing out that people are idiots, how right. long does that keep us happy? And by I'm the way, and by the way, say, isn't that what we're doing to ourselves on the golf right. courses? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. You're, you're, you're going to be a good manager because you're looking at different ways to handle this. In, in, right. Which so many people are not allowed. But, but the, point, the point in golf is we're really doing that to ourselves on the golf course. Most of us are like, we're, 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 we're coaching ourselves not in a good way. You just hit a, are you idiots? Which yeah, is no different right. than your old style. Yeah. Right. 
and and it's not an effective style. It's a very low energy style. It's a it's a style that's with an energy based in frustration and anger. Right. So even I do coach some some people. I've got an attorney in Boston I work with, and, and we just do we just do this kind of coaching. And he's not even a golfer. He's a little bit of a tennis player. We don't even get into that. I got another guy in New York. So this is the kind of stuff we talk about. So, so I'm not saying the whatever, you're misunderstanding whatever. Whatever is just like, it's just done, so let's move on with it rather than, than go to the idiot space so that we're not going to the idiot space. It's it's, it's, it's No, and I would say I do manage that way. Right. I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, know. yeah. Like Peter, I sometimes want to go to the extreme just to see how you react to it. Right, and uh, and there's there's nothing right or wrong with any of this. But, okay, all right. So it's the practice of energy. We begin. We stop resisting. Remember, the body wants to be in a state of ease and flow. So by going into the whatever mode, and really we could almost call the whatever mode the same as with focus band, the the the, the calm eye and the, and the green. So we begin to stop resisting. Um, we accept, it's a huge state of acceptance. You, you allow whatever is to be. It, it, it's done, let's move on with it. Now again, detachment does not mean resignation. You're not putting your head in the sand to look the other way. You're just using a different energy to deal with it. Yeah. And again, I'm fond of saying, it doesn't mean you have to like a bad shot. You'll never like a bad shot, but you get over it. You get over it. You get over it. You get over it. But I'm going to grab your wrist here. You get over it by going from here to here. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I'll deal with it more effectively from here than I will from here. Yeah. Same on the golf course, right? Don't we know that? Good God. Then I'll swing a lot better. Well, I was going to say, how many of how many of you are really swinging freely out there, all balled up? And by the way, the only way you can get all balled up is through thoughts and emotions that have you off in the weeds. You are looking at something in a way that is in total misalignment with the ease and flow that is available in every moment. And that's what the stuff that, that, that Peter's teaching. Well, I did notice last night when I hit some shots. Yes. That it was more of a snap and a, a, a sling to the shot. Joey? Nice. Nice. Good. Isn't it amazing? And to us, this is after you went chipping. Yes. So you went and hit a few full I shots. I couldn't resist hitting some full shots. I thought that would be the catch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sure you thought that. Yeah. If I could have got it with chipping, you would have been drive for right. a long time. Right. right. Yeah. Okay, Tim. What are we what are we actually covering here at the moment? Well, the process, Peter. The process that we're covering is really the process of detachment, and it's detaching from negative energy surrounding surrounding uh, surrounding bad shots. What we what we do is that we go into a state of acceptance, um, which is is critical. It's the shots have already been hit. There's nothing we can do about it, so we can either fight it. Or we can accept it and allow it. And I just, I just suggest that accepting and allowing puts us in a space to move into the positive space better for the next shot. Otherwise, we're just leaking, leaking the energy, right? And I just saw there that, that breathing and meditation. It's kind of breathing and meditation are probably two of the most effective processes that teach us how to move into states of detachment and acceptance. And and there's an important reason why. So, for example, right now. Just go ahead and take a breath in, really watch it go in, and feel it go out. Do it again, watch it go in, and feel it go out. Now, what were, what were, you, what were you thinking about? No, watching my breath, feeling my breath. Perfect, and vision, my breath gone. perfect answer. Can you be focused in theory on your breathing and a problem in the same moment? Probably not. Probably not. In fact, no, you cannot be. So what's the million dollar answer? You go to your breathing. What do I do after something bad has happened that I don't like? And the best answer I've got is go to your breathing. Now, people will try that. They'll, they'll go to a breath. Okay, I went to a breath. It didn't work. What do we do now? What do you think? Again. We do it again. Right. right. But why did it not work? Well, focused on it. Thank you very much. We weren't really focused on the breath. 
we were still more in problem. Now the brain, the way the brain works too, we can go, we can go in nanoseconds. Breathing problem, breath problem, breath problem, breath problem, breath problem. So we gotta get really good at focusing on the breath. Exactly. Because again, you stay with the breath. You stay with it. Yeah. Because when we're in the problem mode, the brain is in this just, you know, it's just like rrr, 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 rrr mode. And, and, and the, what helps us the most is the breath. Yeah, because I've always known that you, you need to take some breaths. I never heard anybody tell me that you need to envision, if you will. So, yeah, right. when you're envisioning you take a breath, that, that's what raises the thoughts. That's great. That's yeah. great stuff. You, you have to feel the breath. Yeah, uh, all my all my all my tour players, we, we do some breath work and whatever, and they'll come back. I've had this conversation with almost every. I'm breathing, but it's not working, and we call that in much the same as, as some of the stuff Peter does. You start going through the motions, but you're not really aware. Right. Yeah, I'm breathing, but I'm still feeling awful. Well, you're spending more time on feeling awful than you are on the breath because the breath is very neutral. The breath has no emotion. Actually, that's not true. The breath has a very calm, blissful emotion. And they were texting when you were explaining that to them the first time. Oh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So anyways, meditation is really a practice where we spend extended times breathing. Uh, Can we I, just stop that for a second? Of course. Because Breathing, you did a great job there, but let's, uh, in a new unit of time, I think meditation has a few few seconds to focus on. That's right. What are you asking for, Peter? What I'm asking for is meditation. Yes, that's what I was going to get into now. Big time. Yes, meditation, I think, is the single, it's, it's funny, <laughs> meditation, I think, is the single most important and helpful practice for learning to manage the mind. I don't like to say to control the mind because that's a little assertive, but for managing the mind. I think meditation is, you know, but even my mini tour and above players would sooner hit balls for eight hours than spend 15 minutes in the morning breathing and meditating. So even when I teach meditation, and I've personally been doing it for about 25 years, it's, it's the most powerful practice I can recommend. But even there, if I mention 15 minutes, that's too, it's almost like be happy for the entire round of golf. So what do we do? And what I do in the early stages, and we'll do it right now, is I just want you guys to take just one breath. Just one breath in and let it go. So go ahead and do that right now. We, we breathe in. You breathe out. Okay, did you do it? Yeah? You just meditated. Great. Okay, good, good. So you think you can handle one, one, just one breath again. Can we do one breath again? Ready? Let's go. In you go. And out. Did you do that again? If you can do this, we can do it out there. And really, each shot becomes one shot at a time. When, when we talk about meditation, it becomes overwhelming. It's too big but they can do one shot at a time. And the problem we get into is when we start piecing them all together, it turns into what I say, it's the difference between a picture and a movie. Movies can be very overwhelming, but if we can just handle a picture at a time, it's, it's a lot better. Now that's a loose analogy, but do you, do you see what I'm saying? We stop looking at golf as a round of golf and rather a series of now moments. I'm going to empower myself right now for this moment. I'm going to do it physically via the swing. I'm going to do it emotionally versus my mood. And I'm going to do it mentally with the thoughts that I think, of course, with the idea, again, that it's the emotions that set up the thoughts and how the body moves. So we do, and this is really what the process of meditation is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a process of no thought with the idea when I'm not thinking any thoughts, I'm also not in past or future, which is where all unhappy thoughts reside. If I'm, if I'm having trouble sleeping, that's too much in my Sure. Head. That's what I, I uh, focus on my breath. And absolutely. The, absolutely. Goes out of the yeah, and the other thing, though, you could do is I would find some good sleep music that's just music only that has what we call delta frequency. 
delta is the delta is 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 a frequency uh, that the brain is in. Um, that music that Peter was playing before wouldn't yeah. that be pretty good? That would be pretty good. I don't know what the frequency of that was. I would suggest that was probably alpha. Uh, that was more of a zone state, but abs absolutely, yeah. And and theta is actually that's the hypnotic state. So I was getting ready to nod off. Yeah, <laughs> sure. It's probably about time for that morning nap. You know? <laughs> You're doing okay. Yeah, I'm doing, doing fine. Doing all right so far. Yeah, absolutely. Good. All right, good. Good. So, anyways, that's that's what we do, though. But again, again, with the idea that it is very. This is this is the trap right here. Most people want to go from really pissed off to I hate feeling like that. So I want to be super happy right now. They're way down here. They want to feel way up here. And this is like 80 miles an hour forward this is 80 miles you better you can you can only do it a little bit then you get the momentum going and then you're you're great but trying to get from real low to real high is too big of an energy leak so we go to neutral first that's what that's what that's what the breathing and the meditation are about so is meditation just do it doing lots of breathing for 15 minutes just yeah sitting it's in a focusing chair. it is, so it is just sitting in a chair sitting in a chair no, no noise around you uh, uh, totally sometimes quiet. music just sometimes music no there are guided meditations too yeah so it's just, funny fact, I, did, I just started doing it about a month and a half ago and yeah what I do is I have a couch and I put my legs you know the bottom part of my legs on the couch and right. I lay with my back yeah I put a little thing on my head and beautiful it, it relaxes my body at the same time yes I love it well, yes, but you sit and breathe. Some you people feel like guided meditations are good to get started because for 15 minutes of quiet breathing when you're new at it, it's oh. actually not that easy because your brain's all over and you're, right. you know, how do you bring it back? So, and even when you're experienced, yeah. I'm here to tell you after 25 years, I have to spend generally five minutes before yeah. I really get quiet. Yeah, so, because, yeah. But I think it is a wonderful way to start the day. And, and to get the, the, the momentum. Even though you just slept all night, you still do it in the morning. Well, sleeping is a great way to suspend consciousness, but waking up, most of us, is, we wake up the same way, thinking the same thoughts in the same state of mind we've done for years. So it's a way to focus on the you working people. Yeah, all the work, yeah, yeah. Once I wake up, i got to go to work. Right, so, exa yeah. exactly. And I'm not knocking any of it, but I'm just suggesting as an alternative, you may want to, you may want to experiment. And you, you know, what, but I would say not. Well, I have a good friend who, you know, an older man now. Yeah. He used to take what he called the power five at lunch. Yeah. Yeah. He'd have a, you know, something to eat for, and then for five minutes, he'd right. sit at his desk, shut his door, and do that. That's what you said. Yeah. Of and it rejuvenated him for the afternoon. Exactly. Of course. Yeah. And so, yeah. But, but I think, I think, uh, just understanding at least, this is the practice. How do I yeah. deal with negative emotion? It's the best practice I have to offer. This is it.